All right, we got stealth tactics, training newbies, war bond. Commissar Typhus, heed my call. There is no freaking way. But there is a freaking way. It is I, the God Emperor of Mankind. I call upon you for service once again. You are to evaluate this new generation of Premier Space Marines by ascending to the ranks yourself and ensure that these new marines are worthy of being called my angels of death. My emperor, in this strange past I've tried to serve you in the best way I know, destroying the Xenos, the mutant, and the heretic with burning hatred in my heart and my faith in you. But if I'm to leave the soldiers under my command, even briefly, to become a space marine, then I must ask you one question. Are you the vote now, Gritham? Ah. Uh. Just get your butt back to Holy Terra. I knew it. I mean, at once, my Emperor. Now I knew that only in death does duty truly end. But Emperor's teeth this game is grindy. By now, pretty much everyone's at least heard of Space Marine 2. And if you're new to Warhammer 40k, this game is the perfect place for you to start. It takes place after an event called the Ultima Founding, where a whole new breed of Space Marines called the Primaris were introduced to the galaxy. These Marines are bigger, stronger, faster, and wield more lethal weapons than their firstborn brothers. There are also millions of them compared to the roughly one million firstborn Space Marines. The story is properly cinematic with compelling characters and absolutely breathtaking set pieces. But I won't spoil any of it for y'all. Just watch this scene and tell me it doesn't make you want to spread the Emperor's light all across the stars. The combat is insanely fun and as a decade-long 40k fan, I can tell y'all that the developers clearly love the universe. The level of detail included on the weapons, armor, enemy types, and the insane levels of customization available let you get the perfect taste of what this hobby is and what the universe is like. That said, this game does have some glaring problems, which I think will lead to a large number of players quickly getting bored if they're not addressed. As of the time of recording, Space Marine 2 has already lost about 35% of its concurrent players on PC over the course of just three days. Compare this to a game like Helldivers 2, which had a much shakier launch, but it still took about a month to lose the same percentage of concurrent players. To further add to my concerns, Space Marine 2 does not have a lot of the bugs, glitches, and crashes that accompanied the Helldivers 2 release, with it being mostly a stable experience. It also has a fantastic campaign, a lengthy progression system with every weapon and class having an unlockable perk tree, and a plethora of customization unlocks for you to customize your Space Marine. So why are players seemingly leaving the game in droves? Before we get into those issues, I do want to make clear that I've really enjoyed my time with Space Marine 2. I want this game to succeed, and it has potential to be one of the best live service games on the market. But the absolute grind associated with the operations mode in particular, and the horrific matchmaking system, seem to have a lot of players turning in their chainswords. Grinding itself ain't always an issue, but Space Marine 2 really makes messes up the formula by making the grind interfere with gameplay variety, especially in operations mode. The game comes with six classes. You got the tactical, the assault, the vanguard, the bulwark, the sniper, and the heavy classes. Each comes with their own set of weapons, perks, and armor. You can upgrade your weapons to more powerful versions through the weapon tier and perk systems, and these upgrades do transfer over to other classes. However, leveling up the perks on your weapons doesn't feel all that intuitive, requiring you to either put a ton of game time into maxing out the progression of each weapon and its variants, or you'll need to use additional armory data currencies to instantly master versions of those weapons that you have little interest in actually using. And you have to go through this process in order to have your weapons feel more powerful. In addition, the vast majority of war gear is not shared among the different classes. Most weapons are only shared with one additional class, and there are many which are unique to a single class. So picking a weapon you love and leveling it up might mean that progress is wasted if or when you decide to play a different class. For example, the Assault, Bulwark, and Heavy classes all have additional restrictions on the type of war gear they can bring to a fight. The Assault and Bulwark classes cannot equip a primary weapon and are restricted to just a sidearm and a melee weapon, while the Heavy class cannot bring a melee weapon. This doesn't mean they're less powerful than other classes or less fun. 
but it does mean that you have fewer choices of what kit you can bring and it will limit how much your progression transfers over to other classes. To compound the issue, many classes have access to war gear that's either unique to that class or shared with only one other class. For example, the plasma pistol is the best sidearm in the entire game. But only the Bulwark and Heavy classes have access to it. So if you really love running the Plasma Pistol, just know that all the progress you make on that weapon will be restricted to just those two classes. Restricting weapons to just two classes is a theme through the vast majority of war gear available to you. The only exceptions I can find being the Chainsword and Bolt Pistol. With the Chainsword being available to four classes in total, and the Bolt Pistol being available to all classes, so level that one up first. Since each new tier of weapon requires you to play on higher and higher difficulties to get the armory schematics required for the upgrade, which are required to progress, easy to miss, and you do not get them if you fail the mission, and the perks for the weapons take forever to grind out, unless you use those additional armory schematics to max them out instantly. At 30 hours of gameplay on just one class, I have still not maxed out a single weapon on perks. This means you're looking at about 40 to 50 hours to get one set of war gear to max level that is likely only shared with one other class. Because the higher difficulties really ramp up the amount of health that enemies have, this means you might need three to four swings of a chainsword to kill even a single basic enemy until you've leveled that weapon up and fully perked it out. This ain't counting gun strikes or executions. This ain't even mentioning the 30-ish hours it'll take you just to level your Space Marine up to the max rank of 25, which is where you finally unlock the full talent tree. If you want to play on substantial or ruthless difficulties, you will need at least most of these perks to even be able to survive most encounters. Some classes can mitigate this to an extent, like the Bulwark and Tactical Marines unlock some very powerful options pretty early on, but classes like the Sniper only really turn on around about level 20. Even if you're crazy good at these types of games, you will struggle to deal damage to enemies on Substantial and Ruthless since they just have such massive health pools, and most of your damage amplifying talents are locked deep into most classes' talent and weapon perk trees. And since you need to complete those higher levels to get the armory schematics required to progress, you just end up feeling weak until you've put in a substantial amount of hours into the game. Which is not a sentence I thought I would ever have to say about a game where you play as an eight and a half foot tall angel of death. To sum it up, if you want to get a class to max level and fully kit out your weapons, it's going to take you between 40 and 50 hours of gameplay per class. You'll be required to play on max difficulty to get those armory schematics, and most of your progression will not be shared with other classes you might want to play. Finally, you may not always be able to play the class that you want due to the matchmaking system. This leads to the second issue with the grind in Space Marine 2, the abysmal matchmaking system. For operations, there's currently no in-game mechanism to host matches. You can get around it with some kind of janky fixes, but there's no way in-game to do it. Normally, this wouldn't be a problem, but since operations restrict your squad to only a single member of each class, so no triple heavy squads, you will often find yourself loaded into a game that has someone already playing the class you wanted to play, meaning you must pick a different class or leave the mission. Essentially, this means that if you don't have a squad of friends to play with, you'll either need to level up two classes at the same time, or spend a whole lot of time in loading screens as you pop in and out of games looking for one where no one's playing the class you want to use. Sometimes it can take you up to 30 minutes just to find a game depending on what class you want to play and how blessed by the Emperor you are. If they would just add a system where you could be matched into games that do not have the class you want to play, a lot of these issues would go away immediately. It'd be much easier to progress since you can narrow your focus down to a single class without needing to waste a bunch of time popping in and out of games. Now personally, I like my games to be brutally hard, so I was real happy to see for myself what a challenge this game can be. But given the issues with grinding out weapons and classes, it does become more of an annoyance than a challenge at times. Take this for example, on Ruthless Difficulty at level 23 with all relic weapons, it still takes me about 30 seconds to kill a single Majora's enemy while using animation canceling and stun locking combos. I hate this style of difficulty where enemies are just, they're not much more dangerous, especially given the dodge and parry systems, but they just have heaps of health. This might be a bit of a personal preference, but I would much rather have more enemies charging at me than needing to spend so much time on dealing with a single one. It makes the challenge feel artificial instead of something to be overcome. Once you fall into the pattern of knowing the enemy's attacks and when you can parry, you will be able to overcome these beefy nids, but it just loses a bit of the shine of being a space marine when it takes you so long to kill one. I'm gonna get a bit nerdy on y'all for a second, so bear with me. This is a melter rifle. It's essentially an anti-tank weapon designed to punch holes in big targets like Carnifexes. 
But in Space Marine 2, it functions more like a horde clearing shotgun than the close range anti-tank weapon that it was destined to be. If you're new to 40k, I doubt this will bother you much, but for someone familiar with the lore, taking up to 6 shots to kill a single Tyranid warrior just takes me right out of the game. You can probably get this time to kill down a bit once you've fully perked out the weapon, but like I mentioned earlier, I have only played the Vanguard class for 30 hours and I still have only progressed the Melter Rifle to Artificer tier. Needing to grind even more hours just so my weapons feel like they're supposed to took me right out of the game and made me want to play something else, despite how much damn fun the actual combat can be, and I really need to stress this, it is so much fun. Now normally scaling difficulties with harder and harder challenges would be exactly what this commissar wants, but since you have to play the higher levels if you want to max out your weapons, and the enemies don't get more challenging, instead just becoming sacks of HP to slog through, I imagine this could be incredibly frustrating for a lot of players. Some of this can be overcome with good team play. Using like focus fire to take down enemies feels very thematic and it is extremely effective. Plus every class has some form of a perk that will boost the damage or the survivability of their teammates, with the tactical marine getting like a 300% damage boost on their ability when it hits, it's pretty nuts. And this does help quite a bit. But for me, a lot of this is ruined by the class restrictions for missions and the insane grind required to get all the classes up to the point where they can be useful on substantial and ruthless difficulties. If I could pick a class to complement what my team has and select my loadout to fit a role I wanted to play more easily, I think this game would see a massive boost in its replayability. Space Marine 2 has the potential to be an incredible game, and it does have a lot of strengths that I think make it worth checking out. But as it stands right now, Unless the combat system just hooks you in, you're a massive 40k fan, or you got a squad of friends to enjoy the game with, you're likely going to get bored after about 30 to 40 hours of gameplay. For me, that is enough to warrant the price tag, but I do think that these issues are going to end up hurting the game in the long run if they're not addressed soon. Now that I've done my duty to the Emperor, I think it's time for this Commissar to head on home.